All right, everybody, welcome back. Welcome back. I um, uh, hope you guys have been able to start to plug into your classes um, the last two days. Um, I hope everybody's safe and, and in, a, in a secure place and all that, and nobody's uh, lost their house or anything like that. Um, and uh, I don't know if anybody attended the, the visual last night, but it um, seemed to be a, a, a good thing. Um, so before we get going, just a couple of some logistical things. So uh, I apologize that your guys' education has been impacted by the craziness of these fires and shootings and all this, this uh, horribleness. But it's what it is, right? It's what it is. So we're going we're gonna to fix this and go forward and keep charging. So we'll we're gonna, today we're going to talk about how we're finishing up the semester. But um, I, I did want to say if you guys are having issues or whatever, by all means, please come chat with me and we can talk about uh, whatever uh, ways we can um, uh, meet whatever the needs or the challenges you guys are having. Um, and uh, also, please feel free to come talk to me if you're having problems with other classes. Um, obviously, ESRM classes, of course, but, but have had some students have some issues with some other instructors and other programs. I'm happy to talk to somebody for you if you guys aren't, aren't feeling comfortable or supported or whatever. So uh, please, by all means, let me know how I can help or any of your other ESRM folks can help. Uh, the, the shutting down, shuttering campus for two weeks is a weird thing. We've never done that before. Um, I don't know necessarily if that was the best thing to do, but um, I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew that it was taken, the administration did that with um, your best interest at heart. So it seemed kind of weird and bizarre and last minute and stuff, but they actually did consult with a bunch of different universities across the country, different uh, uh, campuses across the CSU, okay. et cetera. What it boiled down to was um, the notion of some people, because they're outside of their homes or or they're dealing with the loss of, of friends or whatever it was, um, the original plan was, hey, you know, support you guys. And our, our, our message to the faculty, uh, you know, support your students. If your students need to take a week off or something, that's cool. Turns out that's not really possible with a lot of the, so a lot of you guys are on financial aid and, and, and you know, need to get, um, have these courses count for credentials and grad school and all that kind of stuff. And uh, apparently the way the Department of Education and a lot of the, the accrediting agencies look at us is if I said, hey, I have this assignment you guys have to do, but you know, we could talk about an alternative thing and you could take a week off or something. They don't allow you to take a week off. They still expect you to do the same amount of work. So the only way that we could um, create a path forward that allowed folks that were outside their homes and all that kind of stuff to not get penalized was to actually physically shut down school, right? And so that was, so the same thing as if like a hurricane came through or a blizzard came through and just school stopped. Then it's okay to miss a week or two of class and then nobody's Im impacted in terms of financial aid or accreditation or anything like that. But, you know, when they initially communicated it, I thought, oh, we'll just put a bunch of stuff up online and we'll switch the stuff online. You guys can watch some lectures when you're, you're home and this and that. It, it, it uh, was communicated very clear to me that no, <laughs> no, you can't have them do an assignment, you can't have them, you know, nothing's due, they can't be doing work, et cetera. So it was a, it was a true hard shutdown. So um, yeah, so that was beyond our control and that, that, was, that was how it went down. Obviously, we were, when this stuff started, about half of you guys were with me in San Diego at Blue Tech Week and we're gonna talk about that in a second. Um, the rest of us were going to go on our trip in uh, the following week, right? When we had that three-week trip that we boiled down to just a one-day trip. Um, technically, apparently, we shouldn't have done that. So, <laughs> so I shouldn't have taken you guys on that field trip. But, um, but I think folks, when we talk about it, I, I'd love to hear your guys' opinions, but it sounds like folks really enjoyed it, and it was kind of nice to not be in the smoke and not be in all the craziness. Um, but... Uh, Anyway, so that, me the, that messaging to the faculty was evolving. So I, I, uh, I apologize for the confusing thing, saying, oh, we're gonna do this stuff online over the break, and then we weren't allowed to. Um, but, but here we have it. So uh, first I wanna talk about uh, what we did the last, uh, well, before school shut down, two weeks before we, before we shut down, um, and about some of the stuff. 
and I'm gonna uh, point. To, I'm gonna have a website up for you guys tonight for you guys to start uh, to review these things, um, so that even if you didn't attend both trips or or either trip or whatever it was, you can still uh, get some of the sense of stuff. Um, let me. Uh, First, by way of, of other logistics, though, just to say that, uh, to note that this Friday's lecture is a, another one of our guest lectures that we scheduled like six weeks ago or something like that. So do please be on time. So our guest speaker is Bob Poole from the Western States Petroleum Association. So he's going to come talk to us about, about energy, oil and gas production, et cetera, uh, in the coastal zone, primarily offshore oil and gas stuff. And so he'll give us the, so, so Bob represents the, as I said, the Western States Petroleum Association. And so this is a uh, industry lobbying advocacy group for the industry. There, there are these industries for people that grow oranges and people that make paper and, you know, all the different types of things. Um, this particular one is made up of folks in Western states, so California, Oregon, Washington, that... Um, that uh, produce oil and gas. So that's like the Chevrons of the world and the Exxons of the world and also the smaller scale producers like ERA and, and, and a variety of other ones. Veneco before Veneco went bankrupt. Um, and so uh, just to be clear, uh, they are an advocacy group. It's not a democracy. So what they do is they say, hey, they have all these folks that pay in, and then they, they lobby for different laws. They, they do public you know, education and lobbying and all that kind of jazz um, on behalf of the industry, not one particular oil and gas company, but in, in terms of the industry as a whole. They don't take any position that is not a unanimous decision. So they don't have a bunch of oil and gas folks get together and then um, you know, Marcus over here wants to do this one thing and Tara wants to do that thing and they vote and say who wins. It's, it's unified. So they only take positions that all of their members uh, support and, and, uh, and agree upon. Uh, having said that, uh, uh, I, most years I have the Western States Petroleum Association come talk to you. Bob Poole used to be, this gentleman used to be a, a lobbyist for them, a representative for them. And then he moved on to some other jobs and he just recently come back. So. So he's spoken to you guys before, although not in the last several years, but we have had representatives uh, most years come talk to you guys. Um, uh, to solve these challenges we've been talking about in our class, right, these coastal marine management challenges, we need everybody at the table, right? And that really does mean everybody. So I understand that some of you don't maybe see the <coughs> oil and gas industry as, as uh, how should we say this, as a, as a strong active partner in the future of sustainability in the coastal zone. Um, but uh, as with everything, we hear from all sides all the time, right? And so, so uh, when Bob comes in uh, and, and, and gives us his, his talk and his perspectives and stuff, I expect you guys to be respectful and all that kind of stuff. I know you'll be respectful. But I also expect you guys to all have questions. So everybody should have two questions that you want to ask about some aspect of, of oil and gas production in Ventura County or Santa Barbara, Ventura, LA County, something like that. Um, and you can ask him whatever you guys want. There are, there are different ways, and this is something you guys each have to figure out as you guys are graduating, moving on to the to the career world and all that good stuff. Um, uh, sometimes when you see a problem, the best approach is opposition and go right at that problem and attack that problem and crush that problem, right? Mm -hmm. Other times, the best way to, ch to, to fix that problem is to get inside the thing that's causing the problem and change it from within, right? And so, uh, so I think sometimes some of you guys, when you're thinking, about, oh, where do I want to work after I graduate? Where am I gonna, what am I going to do? Um, you maybe don't necessarily think of a chemical refinery or a petroleum uh, operation, you know, petroleum facility. And I would, I would encourage you to, to not think that way. I would encourage you guys to think about all the stuff that's on the table, right? And uh, for example, our, our local production, our oil and gas production, even though it's true they're producing oil and gas and that's, that has 
a significant impact on the global climate and all this and that. Um, our folks uh, in California here, especially in our region of California, work put a huge amount of time in, in uh, not every single, there's a couple bad actors, but by and large these folks are really, they don't want to have leaks, they don't want to have releases, all that kind of stuff. And have, having worked around the world in different places, this is not how most of the world operates. The Niger Delta does not have the standards that our local companies have in terms of human rights, in terms of environmental pollution, in terms of transparency when something goes wrong, et cetera. So, so um, I, I just, I just wanna uh, make sure you guys think about all the possible options as you guys are getting ready to graduate and think about ways you can have an impact and improve things, right? The goal isn't to make this person a bad guy and that person a saint. The goal is to solve our sustainability challenges. And there's a variety of ways to do that. So, so that's all I'll say. Sound good? All right, cool. So, um, so do me a favor, uh, be on time on Friday and, and everybody have at least one or two questions. So when we get to those things, we can have a good dialogue, a good healthy dialogue.